Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Education reforms in Turkey have sparked intense public debates. Is it a good idea to allow children as young as 10 years old to opt out of academic education? And what is the situation like for girls and women? We're here in Turkey to find out more. Reflecting a wider debate about Turkey's identity and the role that religion should play in public life, there's controversy over the increasing number of children now going to Islamic schools. But how do they work? We went to one school to take a look. Turkey is a secular state, although most people who live there are Muslim. The national education system is also secular. But there have always also been privately run Islamic schools. Until last year, however, it was harder to get into university from an Islamic school than from a state one. But now, the playing field has been leveled and Islamic schools have become more popular. <laughs> With the new state policy, all barriers have been demolished for graduates of these schools, including the special exam conditions for university entrance. And with this policy, the children of conservative families can now have good jobs within the administration. If we look to our Ottoman grandfathers, they were always in the forefront, both in normal and religious sciences. That's why I chose the Imam Hatip. The number of religious schools in Turkey is increasing all the time. But some people are asking questions about the role of religion in education and the goals of some of these religious schools. I've chosen the Imam Hatib High School because it's better compared with other schools at teaching the Quran and Islamic law. In Islamic schools, as well as studying the Quran, pupils also study all the other subjects on a secular school curriculum. There is no big difference between these and other schools. But religious schools like this one are more in tune with our history, traditions and culture. Turkish people find themselves in these types of schools, and that's why they have supported us. But whether Islamic schools are simply a way of preserving cultural traditions, or whether they have another agenda, remains a topic of debate. Meanwhile, educationalists point out that improving teacher training and education generally is the highest priority. Whether or not schooling is provided in a secular or a religious context is certainly an important debate. But so too is the quality of education in schools. In order to tackle disappointing international rankings, the Turkish government is keen to introduce more technology into schools. Let's see how that is working. The FAITH project was launched last year in order to help get more technology into Turkey's state education system, which was ranked an abysmal 32nd out of 34 OECD countries and in which around 40% of 15-year-olds lack basic numeracy skills. So far, around 13,000 tablets have been distributed to around 52 schools across the country. As you see, we are using animations and visual aids to explain subjects better to our students. We can work on more examples. Students do not have to write things down. They can watch these animations again at home using the tablets. They can study as much as they need to understand the subject. Prizmanın acımı. Ne yapmamız gerekiyor arkadaşlar? Üçgen değil deneymiş arkadaşlar. İkiz kenar yamukluyuz. Gerek 
We don't only use them in science and maths, but also in geography and history too. Our bags used to be very heavy with all the books and papers for different subjects. But now we only have the tablet, and that's all we need. The project represents the largest single allocation of resources to education in the history of modern Turkey. In 323 secondary schools, 10,000 smart boards have been installed in classrooms. Tablet PCs are also being tested. We distributed 800 tablets in seven secondary schools at the beginning, then 1,400 more tablets were distributed. In the end, there will be tablets in 570,000 classrooms in 42,000 schools all over Turkey. Gender equality or a lack of it can affect education outcomes for girls and in Turkey this has certainly been an issue especially in rural areas. But thanks to projects run by the government and by NGOs, the situation is improving. We see how in the support. In this remote village in the east of Turkey, education is still seen as more important for boys than for girls. We met one woman who has never been to school. She got married at the age of 17 and now has four children to support while her husband is in prison for illegal trading. I'm the eldest of eight siblings. I didn't go to school because I had to stay at home and help my mother look after my brothers. I don't know how old I am because I'm illiterate, but people tell me my ID card says I'm 30 years old. There's only one school, a primary school in the village. And because the government has now made education compulsory until the age of 12, most children attend. But only around 66% of girls go to secondary schools. According to statistics from 2004-2005, at that time around one million girls didn't go to school and there was a huge gap between numbers of boys and girls in education. So there was a need for campaigns like the Dad Send Me to School and Let's Go to School Girls. These campaigns helped us get started on the road to getting girls into schools. The Dad Send Me to School campaign built a dormitory near this high school to help girls who live far away. The NGO also provides scholarships to help poor families with school fees. So far, 10,500 girls receive scholarships and 12 new schools have been built. It's a great opportunity for girls who couldn't go to school to achieve their dream, especially in rural areas. And because my dad can't pay my school fees, thanks to dad sending me to school, we now have a motivation to learn. This was certainly a big hope for my father. But education is only the start. Once they're qualified, finding a job still remains a challenge for many women in Turkey. That's all we have time for from Turkey this week. But why not join the lively debate on our social media pages? And remember, our Twitter hashtag is LearnWorld. So stay in touch. Goodbye from all the Learning World team in Istanbul. Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.